Hey everyone, it's Alex from Hammond and Ironworks here, and uh, today I'm going to be making a metal pauldron, or at least trying to make one. Um, it's going to be for my Renfest costume, um, and hopefully become part of a suit of armor eventually. Uh, a little ambitious, I know, but that's down the line. So here I've just made a quick and dirty uh, paper template. Um, it works. Uh, obviously this will be a leather strap, not paper. Um, I didn't make a leather strap because I'm gonna make it nicer when it's you know all said and done but here it is you can see the ridges it's uh, gonna be a four piece construction and this top piece up here I'm thinking about extending back an extra inch um, just to get more coverage and so you know get full movement and still be a little bit bigger sorry about the interruption there that was just uh, my dad we're going camping this weekend and we're gonna need to prepare some uh, supplies and whatnot so I uh, just came in, talked to me for a few minutes. Um, anyway, so this is going to be a four piece construction. Um, you can see there's three smaller pieces um, that go into it and this bigger piece. I am planning to extend this back. Um, eventually I'm going to make a gorget and I'm going to change all the strapping on this. Um, I may have to remake it, but I'm going to make a gorget. I'm going to make two polygons that come off of it, um, but that's down the line. For right now, I just want the pauldron, you know, the, the cool part. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm going to get to working on this, and I'll bring you guys along. Um, I've, I haven't made too much armor before. I have attempted to make a few, or attempted to make a gauntlet before. I'm not even sure where that went. I'm sure it got scrapped. I got crap everywhere. I don't, really, I don't even know where it went. Um, but there, were, there was finger pieces that moved and I just never finished it um, because I, didn't, I personally didn't really like how it went and planning on buying a template uh, eventually. If you guys haven't seen templates, go check out uh, David Guyton. He's got templates for everything. This is kind of my own template. His template for the pauldron is a lot more elaborate and it requires a dishing stump, which I don't have. Um, I will in the future. I just don't currently have it. And I need this for like a week from now. So I'm going to make it. Alright guys, so the first step in this process is actually to make yourself a template or to uh, purchase a template. And I made this all myself. I just used some uh, basic printer paper. Um, I laid this all out. I went off some designs I found online. Uh, well, I had pictures I found online. And I figured I could make something similar to that effect. And so this all ripples and whatnot um, to flex with the arm. And this is the big shoulder piece. But the big thing is to find yourself some sheet metal. So this was actually gifted to me. Um, I think it's from some uh, ventilation or something. Whoops. Um, I have even more sheet metal down here and it's causing an avalanche. But I'm not sure if anyone's been in HVAC and if they know anything like, uh, or like if they know what this means. Um, this, this used to be like a big box with a bunch of holes in it. Um, I believe it was ventilation, I could be wrong. But that's what I'll be using for this project. As you can see, this piece is big enough to accommodate um, this, this bigger piece. And it could take maybe a smaller piece, probably not. Um, but I have, I have a lot more sheet metal. And if you guys aren't lucky enough to score an awesome piece of sheet metal like this, go to your local Home Depot, go to your Lowe's. Um, in that kind of steel section, uh, there should be like a bunch of loose steel, like bars, uh, square tube, angle iron, all that stuff. They usually sell sheet metal with this. Now I have no idea what uh, gauge this is. If I were to guess, it's probably like 20 gauge, um, maybe like 22 gauge. It's, 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 it's decent. Um, and it's gonna be a costume piece. It's not like I'm gonna be fighting people in it. And if I was gonna be fighting people in it, I think they used to do something different for that uh, particular armor pieces. But this is just something I'm making, um, and I'd be making out of the stuff I have. So I'm gonna start with this piece right here. This is what I'm be making the the big shoulder piece out of. Um, and then. Once you've found a piece of steel that's gonna work, you need to find something to mark it with. And so I know I have a nice mark around here somewhere. So I'm gonna find that and back with you guys. All right, to everyone, 
So I'm back, um, and I was actually able to find part of the gauntlet I was making, so I'm not sure. It's probably the middle finger, but you can see how I was making gauntlets, or trying to make a gauntlet like this. It's a very similar design to this, um, and I think it, I think it, this would have worked well if I'd known what I was doing, um, but clearly I hadn't, and so I never finished it. Um, if you want tutorials on how to make gauntlets, like I said, David Guyton, he makes a ton of uh, great tutorials on gauntlets. All right, so uh, I also was able to find my my marking uh, sharpie permanent marker. Um, it it's a permanent marker. It doesn't say permanent marker. It's not it's not a sharpie brand. I'm not even sure where I would uh, would have got this. But this is the best marker I've ever found for marking any kind of metal, really. Um, it's like a super permanent marker, and it smells god-awful. So that's the best, I was able, best I've ever found. So that's what I'll be using today. Um, and on this template, I'm just going to disassemble it because I need the individual pieces to lay out and make. Ripping those off. This is just the crappy arm strap. Honestly, just crumple this up and chuck it in the bin. But yeah, so I'm gonna be taking. Uh, if you guys got, so I'm just taking this and I'm just gonna snip them. Um, if you guys are ever looking for the best scissor you can ever find, this is your friend right here, especially for cutting paper. Um, it may leave a little bit of a funny groove or like lines across it, but um, that's just because of this uh, groove. I don't know how, I don't even know how to describe it. But I'm just using some basic tin snips. I'm just going to be using the back of this plate because it is flat. And this does fit perfectly. This is just a, a full size sheet of paper, so I believe it's 11 inches. Um, and yeah, so I'm just going to be straight up against the back of that plate. All right. So I'm not sure how well you guys can perceive this, but uh, I laid these lines out and I can see them perfectly. Now, since I do want it extended just ever so slightly, because I made the template just a tad bit too small, I'm taking my tape measure. I'm measuring out just an extra inch. Well, maybe just, just a half inch. I don't need too much extra. And if you're ca in case you're wondering how I got this to be symmetrical, I actually folded the piece of paper in half and uh, went from there. All right, so if I take this out of the way, oh, maybe. You can see how I got the line all drawn up. Now I'm gonna be taking a hammer, and I'm actually gonna be flattening these out um, just with a basic hammer. Um, and something I do have, which is amazing, and I don't even know where it went. Oh, where'd it go? Come on, work. Where's my baby anvil? Oh, it's right here. If you guys haven't got yourself a nice little bench baby anvil, I suggest uh, finding one or finding something. Something I also have uh, before I got this baby anvil is this was like a hot plate or like um, this was just a plate to put something hot on uh, and my parents were getting rid of it. So if you took this, and you could use it as like an anvil surface, just don't put nothing hot on it because it's got uh, paint. And you don't want that to smoke up and chemicals and all that jazz. But if you find just something thick and uh, 
durable, you can use that. So I'm gonna be taking just a, if you, if you have your blacksmithing hammer, use that, but I'm just be taking a nice S-wing. Um, they actually found on the side of the road and this hammer is amazing. So I'm just be using this. All right, now that I have this all cut out, it's time to, uh, or not cut out, now that I have this sides all hammered out, it's gonna be time to uh, cut it out. So I'm just gonna be starting up here. Um, I'm actually gonna switch to a different pair of uh, tin snips. These ones are designed to cut, I think they're lefties. One of these cuts one specific pattern and the other cuts another way. Yeah, so th this is cutting um, to the right. Red ones are cutting to the left. And uh, these ones are just cutting straight, though. I would argue that these are, well, they're slightly different. Um, just ever so slightly different. I would argue that they're basically the same plier, but you know, or tin snip, sorry, not pliers. And if it ever gets too hard to work, just because this other piece is flaring out, I always make a relief cut. Just grab a straight pair of pliers, or sorry, tin snips. And give yourself a nice relief cut there. And so now you have, not right now I have this all cut out, and it's time to work in back the other way. Actually be switching over these pliers because the curve does start to go the other way and actually I think I'm making a relief cut into here because uh, it's getting harder and harder to maneuver piece is now gone. And I'm noticing this back edge is rather ragged. Hey guys, it's uh, me again, and I've I've gone through and I've looked at some of the footage, and really all the footage I have is making this piece right here, uh, cutting it out, um, and you saw me hammering out some bumps, but that's that's kind of as far as the camera went. Uh, otherwise, when I started doing the other work on it, the camera started to fall. Uh, just because of the mount I had it on so I'll switch to a to a tripod um, I had it, you guys on some sketchy uh, well I had you set up on some sketchy metal and it just kind of vibrated with the bench and it fell down so all you really gotta see is me making this uh, but I will show you guys exactly what I did for this process uh, I'll show you 
bending the metal the way I did. Um, I'll show you guys uh, the rolling edges because um, that was that was what knocked uh, the camera over was the vibrating of the rolling edges. So guys, have you I have you on a tripod off the bench uh, a little ways away, so the vibrating shouldn't get to you. It may still vibrate the camera a little bit, but not too bad. Um, and yeah, so I, I, I want to make sure you guys understand what I was doing and uh, why I was doing it. Uh, the reason behind why I rolled these edges is so they have a lot more rigidity to them. So like, say something comes in, um, like if there was a sharp sword in, bat, in combat, you would, it, it would be thicker steel, I believe, um, and it was actually forged out hot uh, because it was thicker steel. And these rolled edges would provide double the amount of iron or steel or whatever they were making their uh, armor out of. So when they cut through it, they have to cut through twice as much material, but only on the edge. And so it provides a lot more resistance. And also it keeps the shape a lot better or a lot more um, because of uh, the extra material there. Uh, so that's why you rolled the edges. I didn't roll these edges because uh, well, I'm not skilled enough to do that and I don't have the right tools to do that. Um, obviously I could do it impromptu and just freestyle it, but that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave them raw uh, because they look kind of cool anyway. Uh, and these edges were rolled and I'll show you guys rolling the edges and I'll show you guys uh, bending the metal, which was not uh, seen because my camera cut off and vibrated off or like it, it just stopped recording at some point after or during this piece so i i went back and then go oh i can show you guys rolling these edges well no i can't because the camera cut off so i'm gonna show you guys rolling edges and bending the metal all right so this is actually off the forge hood build if you guys haven't seen that go check it out um if i remember i'll put a link in the top right uh or top right's over here i think but yeah so Go check that out. Uh, and this is some thicker steel. If I remember correctly, this is 20 or 18 gauge. Because, um, you know, we were welding on it and we wanted it to be a little bit thicker. Uh, and yeah, so I'm going to do I'm gonna do the demonstration right on this. And you can see here that piece that's above the top pauldron was cut out of this chunk as well. So what I actually started off with was I made sure... I could easily hammer with my right hand um, with the hammer and I started it over the edge of the anvil because you can see the anvil edge is right here if you butt that up and you go even farther um, I probably went about a centimeter out uh, I know most of us use Imperial but you can kind of guess a centimeter um, I just started hitting like that. So it starts to form this uh, edge. And so you see it starts to form a 90 degree bend uh, depending on your anvil. Uh, if you don't have uh, an anvil like this, find yourself a wood block. It may not work as well, but it will work. I'm um, just a scrap four by four. This is what I'm using to drill stuff into and leather working and all that stuff. You can see I, one of my first knives I made on this scrap, I actually pounded nails into leather. <laughs> it was very crude, but it, it worked. So, um, yeah. And so once you had, let me get this out of shot. Once you had this started, or once I had it started, I would come back. And just work your way all up and down the piece. And you want to angle your hammer so you actually roll it in um, as opposed to just flat down. Um, what I did on my other armor was I rolled it flat down, but what they used to do, it was they would actually roll it so it would be like a cylinder and there would be hollowness. This is where it uh, 
where it would get the rigidity from is you would have this extra thickness along the along the side of it I'm not sure you guys can see that how it's a lot more thick but it's hollow um, this would provide a lot of the rigidity and for just bending the metal you can see there's a lot of creases in my armor that's because I don't have like a nice uh, round tube if you have a nice round tube and you can mount it up in a vise or something um, and you can go over that uh, something David Guyton uses is a uh, exhaust pipe he uses that um, to do all of his uh, like rolling work except for like the fingers and the gloves and even part or part of the gauntlets he uses that for so um, that's what that's what he uses but I was just using this curved edge of the anvil this was actually a pretty damaged edge and so I curved it um, I, well, I, I ground it a lot flat or a lot more flat uh, from my guy it was relatively flat but it wasn't quite that flat and I really had to roll um, this edge and up here because there was all kind of divots and stuff in it so I ended up with a nice rolled edge otherwise if you grab like a like a scrap 2x4 four, 4x4 four four, mount it up in a vise and it already has a rolled edge that you can use that's fairly comparable to what I'm using otherwise if you can get something you know like an exhaust pipe and you're able to mount it up totally go ahead and do that um, but what I have is just this edge and so as you can see I would use two hands and just kind of press on both sides into the anvil. Back and forth. Well, you can see it's forming a crease there, which isn't necessarily what you want. Uh, if you have a round pipe, it doesn't, it shouldn't do that. Um, but if you take like an angle grinder or something, you can kind of uh, buff it out. But it's kind of how my armor looks, and I kind of like it. It provides some, uh, you know, uh, character. But also, once I had the piece mostly uh, bent up, I would check it on my arm. So if I say I take this big piece and I put it on my arm, it fits really well. Um, it fits a little extra wide on both sides um, due to the fact you swing your arm around um, and all that stuff but it fits pretty well and um, once I had it mostly there I actually formed it by hand so I'd grab the edges and I'd pull them in together um, now I can't do that because I have the sword blocker thing on this um, but you could physically push it into the shape you wanted hey everyone so I just realized my camera stopped recording and it's probably been an hour or two um, and I have all the pieces cut out and I got this far on the top of the pauldron uh, which is unfortunate because I didn't get it on camera but I will uh, briefly just show you guys how I did this so let me actually flip you guys around all right so as every pauldron will be different um, I actually kind of guessed and checked by drawing the shape of this this concave um, on a piece of paper and then I then transferred that to a sheet of metal and on the bottom of the sheet of metal there was probably a two and a half or, well it was two and a half inches um, from here to here and there was a little semicircle and in that semicircle I I made sure to get these three um, like tabs so you could actually rivet them in as you can see here there's a rivet and a rivet and a rivet um, and then I proceeded to then form it to this and you want to start just by doing the center one um, Yeah, you just want to start by doing the center one and then I decided to do this one and then the other side But you don't want to do um, Two of them at the same time or you don't want to do all three of them at the same time because they will switch um, And then they will change positions But as you can see here, it's curved backwards like it's it's curved this way and this one This is like loop it's looped off to the side here that's because I started kind of farther in the middle and then I bent this one back and so then this metal was actually sticking kind of farther out here and I bent this one in and it gives it a lot more like rigidity like say if a sword comes in or whatever um, and that's how I made this pauldron guard I also did roll this edge and that edge um, you can roll this top edge I chose not to um, because well it's kind of a hassle 
if to do a curved one and that's why you know these edges aren't uh, done but these edges are um, and you can see just the rivets on the inside I've actually taken nails that you can see right here and then I have a pair of uh, metal shears whoops that wasn't intended but uh, take these and you cut them fairly low um, just enough where if you hammer it down you'll get the lip over the top but not too much where it'll start curling and you have a bunch of different problems oh that was my pickaxe my pickaxe fell down this pickaxe is from this is the ninth generation to I'm the ninth generation to have this pickaxe it belonged to my seven great grandfather um, and he brought it back well, he didn't personally bring it back. He owned it in Norway and eventually traveled over across the sea to Minnesota. And then my grandmother had it and she passed it on to me. So that pickaxe is cool. I still need to put a handle on it. But yeah, so just do it with some nails. And now my next step will actually be to attach all the pauldrons or all the pauldron pieces together. So you can see I have all these pieces cut out and they all fit to my arm. Um, they do have ridges in them, which don't look great, but, you know, I I wasn't patient, so I just did them. Um, this one has a lot less. I mean, there is some, but it's not as bad. Um, and it does kind of look cool, so, yeah. Uh, I know you guys did were able to see at least this one and maybe the second biggest one. I'm not sure how much video was actually kept, so. That's that on the pauldrons, and my workshop is a mess, because... Well, everything gets in the way. Um, yeah, so now it'll be time to get some leather and attach them. Um, and I've made sure all these fit my arm and they all work together uh, just by like for, like putting them on your physical arm and just flexing uh, your arm and moving your arm around. And if not, you can always adjust them later on. Ouch, hit my foot. Open toed shoes, not recommended. Uh, yeah, so I think it's time to move on to leather, and I'll set the camera up and bring you along. Alright guys, so in the last clip I know I did say I was going to be working on the leather, and in the next video I will be, but the, I've been editing the video and I had to go back and refilm some of this stuff, because I couldn't just put it in because the camera cut out, and I was using a very janky stand, and I had to go get the tripod to actually record um, how to roll the edges and, and bend the uh, curve and whatnot. I mean, it's fairly self-explanatory, but I wanted to show you guys, and I couldn't just not show it because you'd be, well, what happened to that part of the video? Well, it was my fault. And so I had to redo it, um, and the video is already like 28 minutes long. So I'm going to cut it off here, and I'll be back next week, next Sunday, uh, hopefully bright and early. Uh, but I will show you guys how to uh, do the riveting how to put the leather straps in. I will be making a little ring guard, or a little ring to go right here. Um, fairly similar to the troll cross, but it'll be uh, connecting the leather pieces and you'll see all of that come together. And I'll show you guys exactly what I'm doing and I'll make sure the camera records itself for all this stuff uh, because, well, I don't know. It's being weird. But, so I want to show you just these pieces quick. So I have this main one. Uh, this is the main shoulder guard, or main uh, main pauldron piece. And so it sticks out past my arm just a little bit. It'll sit right about here. Um, and my plan is to actually maybe put a little bit of foam or something along this edge so it doesn't dig into me, uh, like into my neck. Because, well, it's going to be being pulled this way. And also I have these three pieces. Now, trying to put all three pieces on may be impossible. So I'm going to show you kind of the plan. So this will sit right about here and then the next two will go even lower on my arm but you can see you know how it kind of folds together and how it's looking. Uh, but yeah so be tuned back in next week uh, check out all the leather working and all the finishing details and I'll show you guys how I'm filling this crack in and painting it and all the and the whole shebang. So yeah, so stick around, and I'll see you guys next week. Please drop a like, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.